Hi y'all, I'm back here again, except now I'm at the Botanical Gardens here in Montreal. You can tell because you can see the Olympic Stadium in the background. And uh, while I'm out here enjoying the nature and having a lovely day, I thought I might ask all of y'all, is wearing a mask a political statement? If you're living in the current 2020 pandemic hellscape, I probably don't have to explain the current situation to you. But for posterity sense, I will go into a little bit of a recap. You see, back in the before times, a lot of boys were catching cooties. At first, no one thought the cooties were a big deal. Boys get cooties all the time, many argued. But before they knew it, the cooties spread and spread until the whole world had cooties. And the governments of the world, or at least the majority of them, said, that's it. To stop you all from spreading your cooties, we're going to make you all stay at home and wear masks. And some people didn't like that. I mean, nobody really likes the current situation where we're in, but some people really had a problem with being told what to do. And you might say, okay, Sam, that's all well and good. We know the current situation, but what does this have to do at all with anthropology? Well, it might have more to do with anthropology than you think. We think of anthropology as one discipline, but it's actually a wide subset of different disciplines. Anthropology simply means study of man, and that covers a lot. So if we think of the four sections of this tree as the four different main sections of anthropology, we have biological anthropology, linguistics, archaeology, and my personal favorite, cultural anthropology. Now if we pan out, of course, this tree isn't just these four sections. It goes out into smaller and smaller sections, all with their own specializations and types of research. And if we go up a little bit on the cultural anthropology branch, we can find medical anthropology. Medical anthropology. Who is she? What does she do? Well, if you have any passing knowledge of medicine or anthropology, the two might seem to not have much to do with each other. I mean, medicine is all about hard facts and biology, and social sciences are about feelings and the phases of the moon. At least that's what the internet has told me. But uh, that perception isn't really correct at all. Who is able to get access to care, how doctors diagnose certain conditions, how patients respond to treatments, these all have a cultural element to them. So why am I asking about masks in this medical anthropology video? Well you see, medical anthropology can also be used to discuss the way that culture and medicine intersect and interact with each other. And at the beginning of this video, I asked if you thought that wearing a mask was a political statement because in the US and parts of Canada as well, it has become one. And if we look at that through a lens of medical anthropology, I think that we can really learn a lot. Noelle Um talks about how the cultural and historic has shaped the response to COVID in her academic journal titled Biopower, Media Escapes, and the Politics of Fear in the Age of COVID-19. In this journal, she talks about the ways in which fear-mongering and mask-wearing create a visual other that can be pointed out and made the source of anger and frustration at the situation. As you may or may not recall, when the virus first hit the U.S., certain politicians and news media we're calling it the Chinese flu, and we're blaming Asian Americans for allegedly being the source of the spread. Um makes a connection between the U.S.'s historic scapegoating of Asian Americans in times of disease and our current situation. That's not to say that all who oppose mask mandates necessarily have a racist agenda, but that when you stigmatize a disease as foreign or other, it creates distance between mask wearers and non-mask wearers. While masks are medical devices, they are also visual markers. It's easy to forget that clothing can be a powerful signifier of in-group and out-group, whether that's a Taylor Swift t-shirt or a MAGA hat. Noelle mm, also points out how mask mandates are difficult to enforce as employees of businesses 
don't have much enforcement power, and it's quite possible that if police were called in, it's likely that enforcement would be applied unevenly. Another point that I think is important, but Um doesn't bring up in her academic journal, is the rule that a lack of science literacy and a general distrust in educated figures has also played in the growing epidemic. With groups like anti-vaxxers and flat earthers creating their own science and their own set of facts, it can be much more difficult for the average person who's trying to find factual information to be able to know what's actually going on. Add on to that people in power who have been insisting that COVID isn't that big of a deal, insisting that they don't need to wear a mask, insisting that everything is going to be better soon, guys, I swear, even while the death toll skyrockets. Now Foucault, and yes, I can't go an anthropology video without mentioning the Foucault, called this sort of thing biopower. He essentially said that the government uses biopower in order to control the people that live in its country. And telling people that the virus isn't that big of a deal and that masks don't work, that carries a lot of biopower. Now doing so has biopower for a lot of different reasons. First off, if you disagree with experts, you can make it look like you're somehow smarter than the experts, that you know what you're talking about, and the people you want to agree with you will probably agree with you. It also helps to strengthen your base because it gives the people who support you something to rally behind. And thirdly, it creates division between the people you want in your group and the people you don't want out of your group because if you're someone who thinks wearing a mask is sensible and not a big deal, then you can go online and mock the people who make a big deal out of it. And all of that might be justifiable in a way. I mean, politicians are politicians. They're gonna do what they do. They're gonna try to create things to rally behind and all that. And if it was any other situation, I could almost agree with that. But the fact is, when we're getting close to 150,000 dead in the US, trying to make a political situation out of wearing a mask has some dire circumstances. All right, so I've quoted a little bit of literature at you and I've made you listen to me talk about Foucault again. But what is regular you, Joe Schmo, watching this video? What are you actually going to take from this? If you have someone in your life that you care about who is anti-mask, the best thing that you can do is try to have an honest conversation with them. Most people don't respond to being lectured, especially if it's by someone younger than them. But if you try to sit down and genuinely listen to their point, you might be surprised what you can get them to come around on. That being said, if you happen to be in the vicinity of a Karen who is going off on some poor little minimum wage worker who doesn't get paid enough to put up with her bullshit, please speak up and say something because we have to look out for each other. And that's the only way that things are gonna get better is if we put in the effort to understand. And the thing that we have to remember in all of this is who the real villains of the story are. It's not the person on Twitter who is anti-mask because freedom. It's not the person on Reddit who says that masks somehow cut off circulation. It's the people in power, the people in government who have knowingly and willingly let Americans die when this could have been prevented, when doctors begged for them to interfere. And with that, I'd just like to remind everyone to wear your masks, Remember to wash your hands and look to this social distancing queen as your new role model. <laughs> That's all I have today. Bye, y'all.